Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. I'm Wendy and this is my home sweet mobile home. Well, I have had one of those unfortunate mobile home owner moments today. <laughs> I have a leak, which when you own a mobile home, especially an older one, water is not a good thing unless it's coming directly out of your faucet like it's supposed to. <laughs> I was in my laundry room doing some housework and I it just happened to be one of those moments where the house was quiet and I heard the dreaded sound of a drip. <laughs> I don't know. And I look over and one of my washer, one of the hose, the cold water hose to my washer, you know, they have, you have the two faucets there and um, the cold water one is leaking and it's leaking pretty good. <laughs> it's not just the occasional drip drip it is a constant drip 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 <laughs> led to an idea for a video i'd been kind of thinking about this for a while but i thought well there's no time like the present so what i wanted to talk to you about is if you are interested in buying a mobile home and you find one that you want to go look at now this is not really in reference to a brand new one this is mainly if you're looking at an older one to go buy. Um, but before you go look at it, I want to give you some ideas of things you should look for, questions you should ask, just, you know, all that stuff. Because there are some very different, definite things that you need to know before you make a decision on whether or not you're going to buy that mobile home. It might be way too much more than what you want to take on or what you're able to take on. You know, a lot of that depends on what your situation is. If you're like me and you're single and there's nobody here to fix little things like that, well, then I've got to think, okay, who am I going to call to come help me? So, you know, that's just something to keep in mind. But I did write some stuff down on this piece of paper. So forgive me if I'm looking down at times during this video, but I made notes so I wouldn't hopefully forget to give you any information. So, okay, let's say you have found a mobile home. It's older, probably not in, you know, 100% great condition, but, you know, it's probably not too bad. So you want to go look at it. What do you do? First of all, I would strongly recommend that you take someone with you that hopefully has an idea of what to look for. You know, maybe it's someone that's worked on them or has lived in one before or just knows about stuff like that, which I think some men are just born knowing that stuff sometimes. <laughs> it's like, how do you know all that? But that was a really sexist remark. I'm sorry, but it's a joke. Okay. Anyway, take someone with you that hopefully knows what to look for. But if not, that's fine. But um, at least... Take somebody with you, unless you're willing to do it yourself, that is going to be willing to crawl underneath that mobile home and look at it from the underneath because you need to know that, the condition of that. That can tell you a lot of things about a house by the condition of the underneath. So hopefully you have someone like that in your life that you can call on, you know, if you don't have a significant other or what have you but when you go take there's a few things I think that you should take with you and I'm I'm saying these things as a single woman that's owned a mobile an older mobile home for the last 11 years um this is a 1981 double wide and you know clearly it's well now it's you know 11 years older than when I bought it but even back then it's an older mobile home and even though it was in really good condition there were still a few things that were you know things to consider um but you really do need to have someone check the underneath and there's certain things you're going they're going to want to look for while they're underneath your house so clearly bringing a flashlight along is a very essential item <laughs> but you also would want to you know bring a tablet and a pen so that you can make notes 
So if he, you know, the person um, gives you some information about an issue with the home, you know, you're going to want to write that stuff down because trust me, when you get home and you're trying to remember everything they said, yeah, I know that for myself, if I weren't, if I wouldn't write it down, I would not be able to remember what the heck, what the heck that guy said. <laughs> But that's just me. But really, seriously, take something to write with and a tablet or something so that you can make notes on things you observe or things you want to check into later or whatever. But um, also tools. There's a few tools you should bring to um, a tape measure because you might want to measure the windows. If you know if you're in love with this place and you're thinking, oh, yeah, I'm totally buying this house. I'd want to measure the windows to see what I needed for curtains or, you know, whatever kind of window covering you want. Um, I would also recommend bringing a ladder if you can, because another, not only do you need to check the underneath, but somebody needs to climb a ladder and take a look at the roof. At least put your eyes on it. You might not know anything about roofs, but you at least, at least need to look. And you're going to want to ask them, okay, what kind of roof is on this? Some older trailers have the, I think it's called Silver Seal. It's that white goopy stuff that they pour, you pour it on and then, you know, it gets spread around on top of the roof and it seals it. And when you have a roof like that, that needs to be done every so often. I apologize, I don't know how often and I suspect it probably has a lot to do with the climate where you live, but... Anyways, and if it's a composition roof, ask, when was this roof put on? Do you know? How long have you lived here? You know, and why are you selling just out of curiosity? You know, are you selling because the home is in a condition that's more than you want to deal with? Or, you know, those are just a couple questions that you would want to throw out there. Um, oh, I also wrote down to bring a voltage tester. Uh, it's my understanding you can purchase these at Home Depot or most likely any hardware store. And I don't think they're very expensive. But what they do, if you don't already know, you um, put them in the plug-in and test it to see whether it's a functioning plug-in. And you're going to want to do that to every plug-in because you don't want to get in there and find out you've got electrical issues. So get a voltage tester or outlet tester, whatever they call them. I'm pretty sure it's a voltage tester. But And another thing I wrote down just because it wouldn't hurt to have one with you, and that is a level. It wouldn't hurt to um, have something like that with you so you can check certain things because I can just about guarantee you in an older mobile home, a lot of things aren't level. <laughs> you know, and you want to know is that going to be a problem or is it something that's not going to be an issue so those are just a few things you know to take along with you and to prepare for and hopefully the house is empty it's really hard to look at a home whether it's a mobile home or a stick built home when it's full of somebody's stuff you know you can't you can look in the closet but you can't look back in the corner to see if there's you know, anything going on in there that you need to be aware of if somebody's got it full of their junk. So, <clears throat> I mean, their stuff. <laughs> okay. Um, anyway, when you get there, walk around the outside and look it over. What's the siding look like? If it's a metal siding, are there gaps in the sheets of siding that are you know, pretty significant. Can you fit your hand in there? Hopefully not, <laughs> but that's something to check for. Um, you also want to, let's see, oh yeah, the gaps. And then also um, look at the screws. If it's an aluminum sided house, there's going to be screws that attach that to the house. Are the screws rusted? When was the last time the home was painted? Um, you know, that might not be something you want to do is have to paint a house. But I can tell you just as a quick side note, this is a double wide. And my daughter and I painted this house in about three days, just the two of us. And we didn't have a sprayer. She rollered it and I rollered the skirting. And we had, you know, paintbrushes too for trim work. But 
it didn't, you know, it's just a square box. You know, I don't have a overhang or anything, you know, that you got to get up underneath and paint. It was a pretty simple, straightforward deal. And um, we, we cranked it out pretty good. So it worked out really good. So don't necessarily let that intimidate you if the home looks like it's going to have to be painted because, you know, other than the cost, that's, you know, not really, to me, not a huge deal. And also the cost. I did, uh, luckily, the people that lived next door to me at the time owned a hardware store. <laughs> and they were having a big paint sale. So I got my paint on sale. And I painted this house for under $100. True story. So, um, yeah, it was really, it just really worked out good. Um, also check the skirting. Are there pieces of the skirting missing? Are there any big gaps or big holes in the skirting or even smaller holes? Are they holes that are big enough that uh, rodents are going to be able to get in or even the next door neighbor's cat? The last thing you want is a cat using the dirt under your house as a litter box. Yeah, so <laughs> that's something to check too. Um, let me see here. And also when um, somebody's down there looking underneath the house, is the insulation hanging down? Is the bottom of the home been wrapped? Um, are the pipes wrapped? Uh, that is an absolute non-negotiable deal. You have to wrap your pipes unless you're living in a very warm tropical climate. If you live somewhere where you're at risk of freezing temperatures in the winter, you have got to wrap your pipes or you are going to have an absolute nightmare on your hands. Been there, done that. <laughs> yeah, it's not a fun thing to deal with. Um, let's see. Also underneath the house, look for any suspicious puddles of water, like maybe underneath where the hot water heater is. Is there anything leaking out of there? Look for leaks, puddles of water, that type of thing. Is it insulated underneath the house? So those are issues to look for. Um, let's see. Oh yes, and this is so important. Find out where the shutoff valve is for the water because you do not want to be trying to find that thing in the dark when you've got a broken pipe or some kind of leak, something's going on water related and you need to shut the water off to your house the last thing you want to be doing is scrambling to find where that shutoff valve is. Mine is actually just underneath the house by the back. There's a little deck on the back of my house, and it's just underneath that. It's it's not that far underneath, but it's far enough that you have to actually crawl in there to get to it. So believe me when I tell you, I have never laid my hands on that shutoff valve nor will I ever. <laughs> there is not enough money in the world to get me under a house. Not happening. <laughs> but anyway, do find out where that is because that's really important to know. And there, and that's a good thing to write down on your tablet because if you, you, you know, three, four years down the road, you might need to know where that shutoff valve is and you don't want to be thinking, oh my gosh, what did that guy say? Where is it at? So write that down. Um, let's see, I think we, okay, and we talked about the roof. <laughs> I'm sorry, like I said, I've got notes. <laughs> Make sure that you have a list of any questions you're going to want to ask too. Write the questions down before you go, because again, you don't want to forget anything. Um, let's see, also check the condition of any decks, steps, porches. Are they in good shape? Are they rotted and your foot's probably going to fall through that second step when you step on it? Check those things out because that if that's the case, then it's going to need to be replaced. And then on the inside, one thing I strongly suggest that you do is to look very carefully at the ceiling. Has that ceiling been painted recently? Because um, sometimes that's a sign that somebody's trying to cover up evidence of a water leak. So if the ceiling has been painted, ask them, has this been painted recently? Doesn't hurt to ask. They may not be honest with you. And, you know, the thing is, you can only do so much. If they're not going to be honest with you, then you've got to count on your own eyes and being, you know, thorough enough 
<clears throat> excuse me, to catch that stuff, hopefully, if you can. Okay, and the ceiling. Let's see, that could be suspicious. Um, you want to look for any water spots on that roof, like check around like the seat, the fans in the bathrooms, you know, the exhaust fan in the bathroom. That's a, a notorious spot to have a water leak. I had one here at this house back in the master bath at one time. So definitely check there. Um, look inside all of the closets and look up, you know, up in the corners and along because a lot of times if there is a leak in there, and they've painted the ceiling, they might not have thought to paint the ceiling inside of the closet. So make sure you check that. And then, <clears throat> excuse me again, I'm so sorry. Um, turn on everything. Turn on every faucet. Flush every toilet. Um, turn on the faucet in the bathtub. Check the fittings to the washer. <laughs> make And if you can, if you're able to, if there is water to the home at the time you're looking, turn every single one of them on and turn them off to make sure when I turn it off, is it still leaking? So, you know, just be prepared to check that. Um, I did mention to check all the outlets too, so we'll move right along. So, yes, when you're turning on the sinks, check and make sure there's both hot and cold water. Um, let's see. Oh, the heating system. Ask them what kind of heat does this home has, have? Is it a furnace, an electric furnace? Um, this home has a furnace. It's just a, a forced air furnace. There was no air conditioning unit in that at all. It's just, a you know, vents in the floors and you turn the thermostat on and it kicks on to every room in the house. So I personally loved having a furnace. <laughs> it was... Like, if you were cold and you clicked that furnace on, it got warm right away, and I really liked that. But I did have a heat pump installed, so I don't use my furnace anymore, even though it does work, and it's really nice to have that back up. There's, I didn't have them take that out. There's no reason to do that, because it's really nice to have a backup. Because if that thing, my heat pump conks out, I might, you know, and especially if it's the winter time, I need some heat. <laughs> So it's always nice to have a backup. But does your home, does the home have a fireplace? This home has a fireplace, but what I didn't know is that when you light a fire in this fireplace, um, for some reason it doesn't draw good. And every time I'd try to have a fire, the smoke alarms would go off. So I finally just, yeah, forget it. I don't even have a fire ever in my fireplace. But you know, it would probably wouldn't be that hard of a matter to call a local fireplace shop and have them come out and check it and figure out why that's happening. But I did actually end up talking to the woman that was the original owner of this home. She actually lives right here in my mobile home park. And so I ran into her one day and she said, have you ever tried to light a fire in that fireplace yet? And I said, yeah, I did. But I've tried it a few times, but every time I do, the smoke alarm goes off. And she said, that fireplace has never drawn correctly. She said, I don't know why. I don't know what it is. They'd never had it checked. But anyway, that's just an example of something to be aware of. If it has a wood-burning stove in it, um, ask the owner, did you install that? Or if you didn't, do you know who did? You want to make sure it was done professionally and that everything's right with it. In fact, if there is any kind of wood burning, whether it's a fireplace or a wood stove, I would strongly recommend that you have the appropriate person come out and check that over. The last thing you want to have happen, second to water leaks, is a fire. That These things go up fast. You do not want a fire. So if you can avoid that at all possible... Have those stoves and fireplaces checked by someone who knows what they're doing. Okay. It's got that. Oh, and make sure you check all of the appliances. Turn all the burners on on the stove. Check to make sure that each of them work. Turn the oven on. Turn the broiler on. Um, check the refrigerator. Uh, is there a dishwasher? 
Has it ever leaked? Because that's one thing that I've noticed in a lot of these older mobile homes. The dishwasher is not there. There's a cubby, <laughs> a cubby hole where my dishwasher used to live. But when I moved in, there was no dishwasher here. So I'm assuming they took it out because it was probably leaking. I mean, why else would you do that? If you have a dishwasher and you don't want to use it, most people just let it sit there. I mean, you don't. People don't normally go to the lengths of having something like that removed unless there was some kind of a problem. So ask about that if, if you find that's the situation. Um, also, check make sure you check the bathtub, tubs, showers, you know, turn that shower head on to make sure that works. You just want to walk into this deal with your eyes as wide open as possible. Oh, walk, walk around the floor really good and check for anything that feels spongy. Check underneath the windows, by the doors. Um, you just want any, you know, in front of the sink, in front of the refrigerator, in front of the dishwasher. You want to make sure you're not feeling any soft spots in that floor. And let's see what else. Oh, yes, check the fuse box, the breaker box, whatever you want to call it. Just open it up and look at it. You know, you don't want to mess with anything in there, but open it up and look. You know, does it look like it's, you know, from 50, 60 years ago? Or does it look like at some point somebody has, you know, done something to it to upgrade it or whatever? Because homes built, I think it's before 19... 76 I think I, I'm not a hundred percent sure on this but it's I think it's 1976 when they started uh, they don't use the aluminum wire anymore because it was a huge fire hazard and all the mobile homes from that point forward are supposed to have I think it's copper I could be wrong I don't really know much about that I'm sorry <laughs> but anyway you can google it <laughs> But make sure you at least just take a look at it. And hopefully the person that's with you knows what to look for to to see if there's any sign of a problem. And there again, if you have any concerns, it might be worth your while to get an electrician to come out and check it. Because again, the last thing you want to have happen is a fire. So make sure you check that or find someone that knows what the heck they're looking at and see if they'll just come out and take a peek at it for you. It would totally be worth it. How much is your life worth? So, yeah. Um, let me see. Oh, open and close all the doors. The front door, the back door, the bathroom door, the bedroom doors, all the closets, um, utility closet door, everything. Check doors. Do they open? Do they shut? Do they latch properly? Do the locks work? Um, same with the windows. Make sure the windows are able to be locked. Do you have old aluminum frame windows or have the windows been updated at some point? Again, something to check and make sure they all lock. <laughs> Gee, can you tell I live alone? <laughs> oh, gosh. And let's see. That took, woo, that took care of that. Um. Also, oh yes, I asked. I mentioned that. Ask when the home was painted. Um, that's really pretty much it. Um, of course, you obviously need to know what they're asking. You know what their asking price is, and you know look everything over. Make notes. Go home and think about it, and look over your notes and talk to it with, you know, someone your significant other, your husband or wife or whatever, your mom and dad, your uncle some, or a friend, somebody that, you know, if you're not 100% sure that this is something you want to take on, talk to somebody about it and, and let them read your notes and tell them everything you saw, you know, warts and all, and see if, you know, they think it's a good idea to purchase this home. If you see one and you really want it and you think it's, you know, what that it's a good buy for you, then you better jump on it because if you're thinking that, odds are so somebody else. 
So you don't want to rush into anything, but you also don't want to dilly-dally and risk having someone buy it out from underneath you. It's, it's kind of a hard thing, you know. You have to really put some thought into it, and hopefully you've got someone that can brainstorm with you and, you know, that's just what I would want to do if it was me. You may not feel the need to do that, that you you might be confident that you're able to figure that out for yourself and you don't need somebody else saying, yeah, but what about this problem? Uh, that's going to be really expensive. So, you know, if you can figure that all out for yourself, more power to you. And let's see. I think that is just about it. Um, oh, yes, two more things. If you can afford it, have a home inspection done. I think that's money well spent. I know they're a little expensive, somewhere probably around $300. I don't know. I've never had one done, and I don't have any idea. I heard someone say that on a video I was watching the other day. So, but, you know, who knows? I think it probably depends on the area you live in. But check into it and if it's something you can afford I really think it would be money well spent personally I really do and this other thing when you buy the home immediately get your home insured there is um, probably several companies that insure mobile homes but the one that I have is foremost and that's all they do is insure mobile homes I lived out here for probably three, four years bef without having insurance, as horrifying as that is. I didn't know that, well, I, okay, let me back up. I called the insurance company that I had my car insured with. Do you guys insure mobile homes? Oh, yes, we do. Great, okay, well, what do I need to do? And they said, well, first you have to have a home inspection. That was mandatory with that company, and I couldn't afford that. So I thought, well, there goes that idea. I guess I'm just going to have to trust in the Lord not to let my house burn down, which I do. But um, I just, I don't know why I didn't call around to other companies. How dumb can you get? I just assumed that was going to be the way it was with every company that I'd have to have a home inspection done and I, I couldn't but um, luckily I was having a conversation with a neighbor one day and we were just standing there shooting the breeze and she said oh I got to pay my insurance today and she was getting her paperwork out and stuff and I said hey, just out of curiosity we were really good friends or I wouldn't have asked this but I asked her just out of curiosity how much does it cost for to insure your home and well, it depends on how much you have it insured for to begin with. But um, she told me, and I don't remember now what it was, but it was a very reasonable monthly payment. And I thought, what in the heck am I waiting for? And I said, well, did you have to have a home inspection? And she said, no, I didn't. Have, no. <laughs> so you can bet I immediately placed a call to my local insurance agent where I have my car insured, and they absolutely hooked me up in one day. Um, I started out with really low coverage because I was really nervous about being able to afford that monthly payment because I am on a fixed income, and extra money doesn't exist in my world. <laughs> Seriously. And back then, it really didn't exist. So what I did, I started out insuring it for $10,000. And that payment was totally doable. I think it was around 50 bucks a month. Something I don't remember for sure. But it was very affordable, even for me. <laughs> and that's saying some. But um, what happened was, then a couple of years later, I had a massive water leak. I had a pipe break. Not because it wasn't wrapped. <laughs> it was the pipe that goes to the cold water faucet in my bathtub. Well, the bathroom is on, shares a wall with my dining room. On the other side of that wall in my dining room is the mass, is the guest bathroom. And that pipe that had, that went to the cold water faucet had cracked 
And so it was just letting out a little spray, but it wasn't enough that it was immediately noticeable. It So who knows how long that had been going on. But one day I stepped in the dining room and I went squish. There was carpet in the dining room at the time. And you want to talk about a horrible feeling. I just froze. I was, oh, and that carpet was soaked. Oh my gosh, it was soaked. So after I had a heart attack and got my words back, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But boy, I'll tell you, that was a terrible feeling. So um, long story short, luckily I had insurance and I had a $500 deductible. So I thought, well, I don't have $500. I, what am I going to do? So I called my insurance agent. She's just a sweetheart. I just love her. Shout out to Lori. <laughs> anyway, um, she said, no, 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 that's not the way it works. What they do is say you have your home insured for $10,000. So what you get, you get $9,500 to make your repairs. And that extra $500, that is your deductible. So it's not something you've got to come up with five big ones to you know pay before you can get any work done on your home that's not the way that worked at least for me that was how it was when I went through that but after even the um what was that guy he was the adjuster yes the insurance adjuster and he was just fantastic I was ready to adopt that kid by the time it was all over. He was pretty young, younger than my oldest child. But anyway, he was just a peach. And he said, Wendy, you are seriously underinsured. You need to get your uh, coverage raised because if this place were, God forbid, to burn to the ground, you couldn't replace it on what you have it insured for. You're not going to find a mobile home for ten thousand dollars it's just not gonna happen oh ninety five hundred <laughs> so he was right so i um called my agent and i said need to raise my coverage and she said oh yeah we should have done that a long time ago i'm so sorry i should have um been watching that and i'm like no that's my fault i should have you know i was the one that should have been paying attention I just had it insured, so off I went on my merry way and, you know, didn't give it another thought until the day I needed it. And I'll tell you, even with that water leak, um, the flooring had to be replaced, clearly, and everything dried out and stuff. The bathroom floor got wrecked, too. By the time all was said and done, there was barely, and I mean barely, enough money out of that $10,000 coverage to fix that to pay for that project and it wasn't even anything that serious so I was very fortunate so I did raise my coverage and no I don't recall right now how much I have it insured for <laughs> but my payment is I think it's $79 a month something like that and I know that sounds like a lot but how important is your home to you I don't know about you but my home's pretty darn important to me and if this place were to burn to the ground, I need to know that I'm going to have enough money to get myself a new mobile home. So, um, yeah, definitely check into that. But please, please, please get your home insured. It You just can't not do that. Because if your house burns down or something, and think about it, I'm in this mobile home park. My house burns down and it damages the house next door. Well, he's probably not an idiot and has insurance. <laughs> but you know what I'm trying to say. You know, if it, you know, damages other people's property, then I'm liable for that. You know, so definitely get insurance. Please, please, please hear me on that. So anyway, I think that's just about it. That's pretty much all I could think of. Um, just be very diligent. Do some research before you go, if you can. Just, you know, go to Google. You don't have to go all out and know every single thing. But at least find enough information to know, to get a really good idea of what you need to look for and ask about and so on and so forth. But if you are thinking of buying a mobile home, I just want to say, I pray 
that if you do that, that you will be as happy in your home as I am in mine. I absolutely love my home. I love it. I am so glad that I was able to get this place, that the Lord blessed me so greatly. I've got a roof over my head. It's all mine. I don't have a house payment. All I pay here is my space rent in my mobile home park. And I am very, very blessed and more thankful than I could ever hope to express. I just am so thankful to the Lord for how he has provided for me. So I take great pride in my home and I have put in blood, sweat, and tears in this place, literally, <laughs> to make it as nice as I can make it look. And I just am very happy and content and thankful to live here where I do. So anyway, if you get a mobile home, let me know. Let me know if you're currently shopping for one so I can cheer you on. And if you have any questions on anything that I covered or maybe something I didn't cover, Leave it in the comment section below, and if I don't know the answer to what you're asking me, I'll do my best to find the answer and get back to you. So, thank you very much for watching today. I hope this information is a help to you. And again, thank you so much for stopping by my channel. See you next time.